counties, every so often, uh, in fact, around this time of the year, they take full page or half page adverts. His Excellency Governor So and So has given a hundred percent waiver of mm. land rates. What well, I, I always wonder what what does that mean? I mean what? Anyway, so that's one of the ways in which uh, counties lay, raise revenue. Senior mm. land rates, mm. others mm. fees and levies, markets, uh, li small licenses for businesses. Every business must pay a license in the county. You know the so you fire. <laughs> So it, do you, you have a it, goat, you pay a license. It, it's actually interesting, but it, it's a little more, should I say, use the word complex than that? Because mm -hmm. remember, the amount of money that you charge, what we call land rate, mm. is very much determined for, uh, by the function of that particular piece of land. Mm. Is if it's agri agricultural land, the rate will be different. If mm. it's commercial land, it's industrial. But then, remember, towns expand, mm -hmm. and the usage of land also changes. Yes. But do these rates also measure up to these changes? And then you talk of businesses. I may begin as a kiosk uh, and I'm selling groceries. Five years down the line, I'm a fully fledged shop. Mm. Am I still paying the rates of a kiosk or am I paying as this size of shop or whatever category I fall into? Right. Now, and then there is the person who collects this revenue, all right? Uh, whether it is from parking, whether it is land rates, whether it is single business permit, whatever it is. Mm. How do they collect it and how is it actually paid? Because how it is paid also determines how much this particular entity called the county eventually gets. Because right. if it is cash, I am certain that a certain tax will be levied by this particular person who is collecting it. Mm. And the tax uh, uh, will go directly to themselves. So the Lazarus will keep his. But what I would like mm. our guests to explain to us mm. is these things that confuse this, the mind of a simple person like myself. Mm. All right counties their monies how they should collect them what they should do with them how does it work how does this relate to what they receive from the national government mm. how does this relate to their functions what can they use what can't they use from what they collect yeah etc etc et 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 yeah. so our guest this morning is a member of the kiambu county assembly he is the mca for dendero ward solo kenodia he joins us on the line good morning Good morning to uh, thanks Eric for having me. Karibu sana to the situation room. Uh, thanks. I look forward to a constructive engagement. Indeed, as so do we. And you've heard the question from uh, CT Muga. Let's just start from that. First of all, establishing what is it that counties can levy and what is it that the national government can levy within the county, and then how does that relate to what the money that then comes to be used by the county can the county directly use the money that it directly collects or does it have to go into the national government and then come back as part of uh, the revenue division uh, thanks uh, the counties uh, are empowered under uh, the constitution to correct uh, entertainment tax property rates and uh, other business permits um, these uh, amounts that are so collected are not uh, allowed under the constitution to be used as both. They are supposed to be collected and then uh, deposited in the county uh, revenue fund, which is uh, domiciled in the Central Bank of Kenya. Mm -hmm. And then with the permission of uh, the control of budget and with approval of uh, the spending request is when uh, we are allowed to spend that uh, collected revenue in line with our gazetted budget. So spending at source is outlawed unless under very specific circumstances which uh, the exemption is given in the Public Finance Management Act where that money collected at source is already approved to be spent as uh, appropriations in aid as per the gazetted budget. Uh, and that also would have uh, to require the approval of uh, the control of budget so basically but, uh, that is uh, yes. sorry go ahead yes go, go ahead yes that is the ideal situation mm. uh, the reality on the ground is that uh, spending at source is happening and there's a lot of uh, eleven leakages mm. that is uh, ongoing at the moment you know the 47 county so what i wanted to ask is as i understand you um what you're saying is if a county collects money in Within its, bounder, within its boundary, it deposits that money into the county revenue fund, but then 
apply to the control of budget and you can directly use that money it does not have this is separate from the division the division of revenue uh, bill or act that is then passed at the national level so basically if a county collects 10 billion shillings it can just using its own budget and using the control of bu of budget approval spend this money uh not exactly uh the own source revenue uh, the equitable share from the division of revenue bill the borrowings and also the condition of grants all form part of the our budget mm -hmm. so that amount in aggregation is what uh, frequently we request uh, the control of budget to accede to our request to spend in line with the uh, segments of the budget that uh, is uh, approved by the county assembly so it's pretty much like uh, the national government budgeting where even the local collection the foreign aid and also the domestic borrowing form part of the entire budget and any spending out of that uh, basket has to be approved by the control budget mm -hmm. what happens when the county spends money in the non-regulated format that is laid down is there a way in which uh, the central bank can punish them is there a way in which the central bank can get back the money uh, how does that work? Because as you've mentioned, there are leakages. I'm going to ask you what these leakages are, but for now, is there a way in which the central bank can actually ensure that the counties uh, follow the rule book? Um, the unapproved uh, spending is happening in the form of uh, unbudgeted commitment, which uh, result into pending bill. Uh, the counties uh, overestimate the amount of money they are going to collect uh, from the own source revenue and they create an artificial ceiling because they know from the get-go that they are not going to realize that own source revenue. So when we are doing a budget, we compile the equitable share, we compile the condition of grant, and we also co co compile the borrowing that uh, we are going to finance the budget with. And then as the last component, counties usually overstate the own source revenue Mm -hmm. to create an artificial room for them to issue local service orders mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. local purchase orders which are not supported by the budget and that way they are able to escape uh, the regulation from the control budget that uh, every other expenditure has to go through uh, his or our office and uh, it has to be supported by the budget and the crisis now that is uh, with the counties is that uh, by switching with the own source revenue projections in the budget and having that uh, inflated figure gazetted as part of the budget, they create an artificial room where they can uh, incur expenditure and then pass it on to the oncoming uh, governor. Uh, probably every election year when there is a campaign mood, uh, the governor go out on a spending bridge. And they're using that tweaking and creating an artificial window where they have a ceiling to spend outside the achievable attainable revenue levels they're able to create that problem of uh, pending bills so that is happening aside from uh, the fact that uh, we also have the problem of the uh, revenue leakages and also business automation that uh, was projected to enhance revenue collection was uh, invaded by vendor driven contracts where you have uh, softwares that serve the interest of uh, the supplier other than serve the interest of the county in revenue collection. For instance, you'd have a situation whereby if you walk into a county A to pay a business permit voluntarily, there is a revenue share proportion for the vendor of that software. And th yet it's very hard to determine his contribution towards mm. uh, you volunteer, voluntarily going to pay for that <laughs> single business permit. Yeah. If it, it you pay for property rent, it sounds as though you are telling us processes that border on the fraudulent, Solomon. Yes, uh, it's uh, a graduated uh, form of uh, fraud that oh, is yeah. very hard to <laughs> And this is something that is uh, across board, everybody is aware of, but just continues to do it because nobody has shown the light on these practices or because they're being swept under the carpet? These issues have come up uh, in uh, quite a number of counties in the Auditor General report. For instance, uh, in Kisumu, there was an issue. In Kisumu, there was an issue where the vendor who's uh, supplying the software 
is able to hold uh, funds from uh, local collections for up to two weeks. And uh, this sender, incidentally, is a bank. So you can imagine the bank is trading with the local revenue from Kisumu before remitting it to CRF account. That is tantamount to revenue leakage because somebody is profiting from uh, taxes that are supposed to uh, engender the government role of uh, provision of service. Uh, that issue was raised in an audit report by the Auditor General and also World Bank. In Kambu, we have uh, a problem again where we have um, a parallel revenue collection uh, system, about mm. four what? in operation. <laughs> and all these systems uh, have a revenue share. So you can imagine uh, the interest of the Mwanainchi and service delivery is not at the core of uh, this procurement, mm. but rather interest of uh, people in powerful positions who are in the first regime uh, that procured uh, those systems. So essentially what you're saying is that some of these schemes are a carryover from a previous government and uh, as we know every government comes with their, their, their own little kingpins or and and so everyone has a system by which they ensure revenue is collected. What portion of this revenue actually eventually gets to the county? Uh, the vendors uh, demand between 5 and 10% uh, of whatever is collected. My Lord. And in some instances, uh, like Vihiga, um, there was uh, an agreement of 20%. <laughs> so you can imagine uh, it's uh, a, truth, uh, a very ruthless uh, slaughter of uh, this tax. And there is no cap that the law, they, 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 there is no limit that the law sets in force that, that, that indicates that it is only this percentage that a vendor is permitted to actually levy on a county. There, there is no such thing. Actually, is there a law that uh, manages how a county can then procure services, such services on, on source revenue? Yes, actually, the constitution, which is the supreme law in uh, Article 201, uh, demands uh, prudence in, uh, and transparency in uh, spending of public finances. And Article 227 uh, is very specific in terms of uh, procurement. And that uh, procurement uh, has to be done prudently and the uh, value for money concept has to guide uh, that procurement. Uh, flowing from that uh, two provisions, we have the Public Procurement Disposal Act uh, and Public Finance and Management Act, which uh, outlaws uh, wasteful expenditure. But, um, because uh, we have 47 go governments, and you know the mentality of the uh, majority of people in public service is that uh, we are ever looking for loopholes to capitalize and uh, score uh, in our own favor. It's very hard to govern because um, IFMIS was born out of uh, the Public Finance Management Act. Yep. And IFMIS, uh, in its work, outlawed uh, the local authority system, which was called uh, life form. Mm -hmm. which was working very well because uh, it had uh, domesticated all the revenue stream mm -hmm. for local authorities. Mm -hmm. And uh, the directive from Treasury was that uh, counties were to procure systems that are able to be integrated uh, to business. Mm -hmm. And then uh, they were to withdraw from using uh, rifles. What happened uh, from uh, 2013, there was a downward spiral and the revenue reduced to levels that were below what the aggregated uh, local authorities in particular counties are collecting. Mm. So, so that gap was created by a directive from Treasury that was intended to harmonize uh, management of finances, but it had uh, unintended consequences by creating room for people to profit from uh, that opportunity. So there's no, just like going back to CT's question, there's no law that caps how much revenue share you, you can get into with uh, any en entity that you're procuring services f from? There, there are two options uh, for uh, remuneration of uh, a vendor. Mm. Uh, there is a one-off uh, subscription fee, and then uh, annual renewals, mm -hmm. and then uh, there is the option of uh, revenue share. But most of these vendors present uh, the option of revenue share uh, because they know um, it's more lucrative uh, in its nature. Yeah. But this is something that is uh, emerging. It's an emerging issue that uh, Treasury should look into. And uh, as they propose to amend the PFM Act, because there is a strategy paper to that regard, and also to amend the Public Procurement and Disposal Act, they should uh, fine-tune uh, those uh, limitations because currently it's an open check. 
because a county like Nairobi, 5% of uh, the potentially collectable uh, revenue of uh, above 15 billion uh, is not the same as uh, 20% in Vihiga because Vihiga is a low potential county. Mm. So again, you can see it's a very open uh, area that needs to be regulated closely in line with the provisions of the constitution on procurement. You put it very well, sir, but I, even as I was thinking about it, uh, it is not possible for a vendor to actually function with the county without the okay of the county instruments that allow such a person to, A, first of all, be procured and for them to operate. Now, so it means that everything that we're looking at here is with the connivance of those who are in charge within the counties. If, if you look at the trend uh, in Nairobi, when uh, there was a regime change, mm. there was also a change of the vendor. Yep. That's all. Mm. Because they fell out. Mm. And uh, <laughs> the ancient regime uh, had a stake, and uh, <laughs> the incoming regime had a stake. Uh, in Kambu, um, we have a software, one uh, in uh, development applications uh, mm. that is donated by World Bank. It's working fine with a lot of challenges. But uh, we have tried to address ourselves to the issue that uh, the backup, uh, the suffer is uh, in India, which is a problem in itself, because if we were to have a problem in India, we would lose data in Kambu. But again, there is vested interest, and um, <laughs> there are people who are not uh, inclined uh, to let it go. We have uh, two other applications, and uh, there is conflict of interest, because uh, one is operated by a bank that banks the collection. So we don't know how long they are going to hold the collection in the suspense account and uh, at what point they remit to CRS in Central Bank. If you follow through as a committee on oversight, they'll tell you we had these challenges, that's why the delay occurred. Actually, so you've actually uh, responded to the question I was going to ask because then the county assembly, I think who among its various functions is that of being a watchdog. I was going to ask, so essentially the committee that deals with such matters within the assembly how then do you hold the county accountable? That is, of course, if you can. Uh, we have pronounced ourselves on this issue, and uh, we continue to pronounce ourselves. But um, big business, of course, uh, there are a lot of vested interests in big business. So essentially, if, if I hear you right, uh, Mushimiwa, what we're saying is that the, main, the business that seems to predominate the thinking of county governments is officials within the county government doing business with the county government yes uh, i admitted uh, from the get-go that uh, this country traditionally is a loophole economy and uh, <laughs> people in government would essentially look for loopholes mm. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> make a kill <laughs> <Whoa. laughs> <laughs> i think the culture uh, that is permeating and uh, several decades old so that's what we are set again and mm. that's what we are trying to Okay, as naive as this question may sound, the top executives are county level. Are they aware that this is going on? Um, yes, uh, this is documented because uh, even uh, the Auditor General uh, from time to time has taken issue mm -hmm. with uh, this one, uh, even uh, up to the level of uh, control, c Council of Governors. Yeah. So it's an issue that uh, has been well canvassed, and uh, some counties uh, are moving in that direction. For example, in Kiambu, we had a proposal as a committee because uh, our people uh, are IT, uh, well, well IT adept, they, they are well equipped in IT. Mm. We divorce ourselves from uh, procuring and we develop uh, an in-house uh, developers unit where we hire young gifted uh, software developers to develop software for our county on a need to need basis. And then uh, we also have an enterprise uh, resource planning uh, platform where all these softwares are housed. And then uh, that software, the mega one, is uh, linked to it. Uh, we are still at the budgeting level and we are hopeful that uh, before uh, we conclude this financial year, that can be done. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, for so long as uh, there is uh, some commercial interest, we won't get the best for the county. But if we have our own developers who are civil servants and they're employed to take care of uh, our own interests as a county, then we can avoid those uh, issues uh, that uh, crowd issues to do with the software procurement.
So, Moshima, are we looking at a case whereby, because, we, I mean, we talk about what could be seen as small amounts, 5% here, 10% here, 5% here. Are you at a place, when we're talking about much needed income at the county level, we're talking then about huge amounts of money being lost that could actually be used and put towards county development. Is that the case? Uh, aggregated, uh, the small amounts uh, would add up to quite uh, a considerable amount of money. And then the other issue is, uh, and the uh, city had uh, raised that issue, nobody is allowed to spend at source. When uh, a provider is uh, allowed via this contract to extract the 5% before the money hits the CRF, mm. uh, that is also qualifies to be spending at source, mm. which is, is irregular and illegal. And uh, no county has been able to address that issue despite uh, that issue coming up uh, in a subsequent audit. Has uh, been able to address it or has been interested in addressing it? Um, we are the mercy of these vendors because, again, uh, as we said, they are regime, uh, every other regime would have their own vendors. Wakiambu, uh. which uh, currently we are into a third regime, We've not been able to change uh, the software since uh, 2014, 2015. So uh, it's an issue uh, that needs uh, a lot of thinking. And uh, Treasury should also pronounce itself on this issue. Other than this, also, we have issues to do with the... Uh, we have uh, modern software, but we have a very uh, highly aging work. And that is not uh, ICT compliance. When uh, you send people to collect uh, parking, revenue using hard hand gadgets that are ICT based and uh, the training is also not uh, uh, aligned to ICT, it's just general training mm. then that also presents a problem uh, safe uh, barring the issue of uh, corruption our own employees uh, technically compliant to work in a business uh, automated environment so that again is an issue that uh, counties should focus on you know, I'm wondering how um, all this would happen. Uh, I just look at the journey that we took from enactment of a constitution and all this uh, actually even entrenched in the constitution. Then there are laws that govern how uh, public finance is managed. Then you look at the transitional authority. We look at the Commission on Revenue Allocation. We look at the control of budgets, the Council of Governors itself and the expertise that it brings, uh, the Auditor General. But despite all this, we are still talking about counties not a being able to raise the revenue that they should be raising that they have a potential to raise and b all these leakages that are happening at county level how does that happen um it's a lack of uh, political goodwill um that uh, by and large is the main reason why we continue to see uh, these are uh, leakages. Also, um, we have a lot of political interference in uh, the revenue collection front, where um, every other subsequent regime, uh, in a bid to reward their campaigners, they would post uh, their campaign uh, foot soldiers to be revenue club. And uh, also I guess I guess what I'm asking, Mushimua, is with all these laws in place, with all these institutions and uh, independent institutions in place. Is it not possible to rein in on this wanton uh, corruption or mismanagement of public finances by those in authority? Um, Kenya is very interesting. Uh, <laughs> we, whenever we have a problem, instead of uh, enforcing uh, the laws that we have, we register it more. Hmm. Um, we had uh, <laughs> the anti-corruption authority when uh, it was not effective, uh, we came up with the uh, Anti-Corruption and Economic uh, Crimes Act, mm -hmm. uh, which again, uh, we are doing uh, pretty well in terms of enforcing, but we cannot do everything at the same time. We also need uh, to have a change of uh, societal attitude towards uh, matters to do with integrity, because um, the society uh, puts us in, in office despite uh, our obvious shortcomings as a politician. Um, for example, uh, a good uh, example would be Nairobi County. Currently, the NMS, nobody elected the NMS, mm. and it's working just fine. If uh, we go back uh, in retrospect, 
and ask uh, if uh, the good general was to buy for an elective post maybe two years back, would he have made it uh, even uh, to the top three? Even today. So, also, we have uh, a permissive culture where corruption uh, is uh, looked upon mm -hmm. with uh, very much eyes. So, uh, even the community itself, the society, needs also to reevaluate itself and look at uh, the societal values. So, so that uh, if we fight corruption, we fight it in an enabling environment that enables uh, the government and the, uh, the enforcement agencies of government to work. Moshimua Solo Kenudia, MCA and Dendero Ward in Kiambu County. This conversation about on source revenue for uh, counties and looking even at the policy, at legislation, at what's working, what's not working. It's a big conversation. And we hope to invite you again so we can have a longer and deeper conversation around this. I think we just cracked the surface hmm. to just find out the status of things as they are today. And the revelations that you've uh, made are quite eye opening. Asante Sana for joining us. Thank you very much uh, for having me. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Mwishimiro.